ChatGPT is cool and useful, but it suffers one major flaw. It does not use your existing ecosystem of knowledge. And what I've been wanting for a long time now is a way to use AI with my Obsidian Vault. And I don't mean just being able to use it inside Obsidian, but also for it to use my existing notes to generate an output. And OpenAI just released yesterday their newest model called GPT 3.5 Turbo, which improves on the previous model at 10% of the cost. So there's no better time than now to start using it. We're going to do all of this with a plugin created by Nuridin called Text Generator. And this plugin changed a whole lot since it first came out. I first mentioned it in the video where I go over every plugin that I'm using, and it has evolved to become one of the most powerful plugins in Obsidian. All right, so let's get right into it. All right, so we're going to install it by coming here to Settings, Community Plugins, Browse, and we're going to browse for Text Generator. And if you already had it installed, still make sure to update it because it changed a lot. And when we go to the plugin settings, you can see that this one requires an API. And if you don't yet have an API, just come to the OpenAI's website and make an account if you don't already have one, and then come here to API keys and create a new secret key. And then just copy and paste it into the plugin settings over here. And before we move on, I wanna say that although very cheap, the API is not free. They do give you a full $18 worth of credits, which is equivalent to a lot of requests. And you don't even need to give them your credit card information. As for how the pricing system works, OpenAI uses tokens, and 1,000 tokens is roughly 750 words. And until yesterday, 1,000 tokens on their most capable model was 2 cents. But now that we have GPT 3.5, it costs only 10% of that while being a more capable model. And I also want to say that this is the cheapest possible way of using the API, because there's no middleman here. The plugin itself is free, and all you're paying for is what you're using. If you look at other services like Jasper, you're looking at a very high monthly subscription which doesn't even include unlimited use. Not only that, but because there's no middleman here, you get all of the new models as they come out and a lot more control over how you use them. So let's now go over the plugin settings and the first thing you need to choose is a model. And if you click update models and then click on the drop down, you'll see that we have a lot of models to choose from. Up until yesterday, I was frequently switching from Curie and DaVinci 3, but now that we have GPT 3.5, it replaced both of them for me. So that's the one we're going to choose here. Then we have a new option here, display errors in the editor. And if you toggle this on, if a query goes wrong, a callout will appear on your note telling you what went wrong. So I like to leave this on. Then we have the option to choose the max tokens, and I have that set as a hotkey, which I'll go over in the later parts of the video. Then we have temperature, and a lot of people think of this as a creativity setting, but OpenAI themselves say that it isn't about creativity, but rather randomness. The values can be anything from 0 to 2, and the lower the value is, the less randomness it'll use. So for instance, if the value is 0, and I type my favorite animal is, and then generate text, it will answer dog every single time you toggle it. But if you set it to 2, it's going to give you something completely different and more elaborate every single time, like a sea otter with a baseball cap. The default value for the temperature in this plugin is 0.7 if I'm not mistaken, so we're going to leave it at that, as I think that's perfect for most tasks. Then we have frequency penalty, which works by lowering the chances of a word being selected again if that word has already been used. The higher this value is, the lower the probability is to see the same word more than once in the same response. I leave this at 0.5, which is the default. Then we have show status in the status bar, and I like to see it, so we're going to leave it as on. And then we have prompts templates path, and we're going to go over prompts a lot, but for now we just need to set a place for them to live. You can leave it as it is, or assign it your own directory of choice. And then we have considered context, and there's two different commands that we can use in this plugin. One is a simple generate text command, and that's where these two apply. And the other, which is what I use the most, is a template, and that's where these here apply. And we're going to come back to consider context and the options list over here. But for now, let's go over those two commands beginning with text generation. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this as prompts are what really makes this plugin shine. But having said that, text generation with this new GPT 3.5 Turbo is a big improvement. And with text generation, you can tell it in plain words what it is you want it to do. So if I create a new note and I title it test text generation, and I type something like brainstorm ideas for a research paper on machine learning, and then I press Command P for Command Palette, and I type Text Generator Generate Text. It's going to brainstorm some ideas for us. And this is like a quarter of a second, so it's way, way faster than ChatGPT. And you can use natural language for most queries. So I can do here, give me a Python script for Hello World. Press Command J, which is the hotkey, and there we have it. You can also use it in a way that makes use of the metadata in the front matter. So if I create a new note here with a similar title, and I do something like title, how to sleep better, keywords, exercise, nutrition, and sunlight. I'm going to close this out, then press Command P for Command Palette, text generation, and I just got to make sure I use the one that says use metadata. And as you can see, it generated some text making use of what I gave it here in the front matter. 
It's important to note that unlike ChatGPT and its chat nature, you need to tell the API the context you want it to consider. And the API considers context based on what's in the plugin settings, such as over here, when you scroll down to consider context, but also what you have selected and where your cursor is. So I'm gonna create a new note. I'm gonna call it consider context, and I'm gonna put a bunch of lorem ipsum text. And the three examples the documentation mentions are the selected text, which is pretty straightforward. Just whatever you have selected is what gets sent to the API. And then we have cursor line not empty, which means that if we have a block of text like this one right here, and our cursor line is in one line right here, only this line will be sent and none of this and none of that. And lastly, we have cursor line is empty, which will send everything before your cursor. So if we have a big block of text like this and I have my cursor line over here, it's gonna send all of this. Before we go over templates, if you're as interested in AI as I am, you need to understand the core concepts behind neural networks and machine learning, which is where my sponsor Billion.org comes into play. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform that is really good in turning difficult concepts into easy to understand bite-sized lessons. The problem with most courses is that they lack the structure to explain difficult topics, and it's all theory. You're not learning by doing, and Brilliant fixes both of these problems by offering hands-on learning experiences and providing real-world examples. This ensures that you understand complex subjects like maths and sciences instead of simply memorizing theories. And because Brilliant has thousands of lessons from AI to data science with exclusive new content added monthly, there's always something new to learn. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash from Sergio and the first 100 people that sign up get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So let's now go over templates. And to use a template, we first need to come to command palette by pressing command P text generator, and then template packages manager. And we're gonna install the default prompts package. If you want, you can also install hugging face prompts and Dali 2, but we're not gonna go over that in this video. And now that you've installed them, you can see that we now have a text generator folder inside our vault. And if we go inside, you can see that we have our default package right here. And I also have Dali 2 as I downloaded it previously in this vault. And if we go into those files, you can get a good idea of what each template is doing. And there's many different ways of using templates. So if I go back to our text generation note and I clear this up, and if I press command P for command palette and I type in text generator, you can see that we now have a lot more options than before. But aside from the create a template option right here, they're all just different ways of adding a template. And the one I find myself using all the time is this one right here, generate and insert template. And I'm gonna set a hotkey for it by coming here to settings, hotkeys, I'm gonna type text generator. And in here for generate and insert template, I like to have it as option T. And this is the part where we can come back to the options in the plugin settings and choose what we want it to display in the command palette. And like I said, I mostly just use the generate and insert template function, so I don't really need to have all of these toggled on. So now if I exit out of this and I press option T, we now have all of these different templates we can choose from. I'm gonna grab my highlights on one of the latest posts by Nest Labs as an example. I'm gonna paste it here. So let's try some of these templates on this text. And the first one's gonna be simplify. I'm gonna place my cursor here, option T, simplify. And here it is, looks like it did a good job. It has roughly half the amount of words and it says most of the same things. Let's try another one and let's do rewrite. And as you can see, it's a lot more quirky and fast paced, but if you come to the prompt over here on the left under rewrite, you can see the actual prompt says, rewrite the content to make it more attractive. And you can change this to whatever you want. So if I put here, rewrite the content to make it more serious and eloquent, let's see what it comes up with. I'm gonna delete this one here, option T, rewrite. And as you can see, it did exactly that. And we're gonna go over this later, but you can change and modify any of the existing prompts as well as create entirely new ones. Let's get rid of this and let's try another one of my favorites, which is summarize. And as you can see, it did a great job. And the prompt for that was simply summarize the content. All of these prompts are really useful in different scenarios, but the one that inspires me to write the most is usually brainstorm, especially since it's the one that uses other notes in my vault. Because up until now, we've only looked at this model interacting with content that's inside the note it's being toggled on. But it can also, and this is what really sets it apart, use the other notes in your vault so long as they're linked to that particular note. So to see that in action, the first thing we need to do is to come back to the plugin settings, and we're gonna toggle on include children inside considered context for templates. There's one key here though, and that is that to use the include children function, it needs to be a template. That's why it's here, under considered context for templates and not here. The second thing we need to do is to create a simple template by coming here to command palette, text generator, create a template. 
and I already added it to this vault and it's living right here under local and it's called children template. And this is what it looks like. And I created this based on the documentation. And once you have this set up, it's ready to use. So let's come back to our note that we're working on. Let's clear this up. And I'm gonna link my notes on an article from Nat from last year titled anxiety as it relates to time. And I'm also gonna link my highlights to a YouTube video related to the subject from what I've learned. Why are you uncertain, unfocused and anxious? So now if I press option T and I choose my template, brainstorm ideas about children notes, it's gonna brainstorm based on these two notes that we have linked here. And the more links you have, the more interesting connections the model is able to make. So the five templates I use the most are Simplify because a lot of times I add a lot of stuff that doesn't really add to the overall point I'm trying to make. And this is especially true in research topics. I use Summarize a lot, especially when it comes to Readwise articles that I save into Obsidian because sometimes I end up highlighting a lot of the article and I know that if I look back on it, I might take a long time to remember what the article was about. So at the top of the note where the article lives, I just have a little summarize box. And because that prompt is usually pretty good at summarizing the main points, I can easily look back at it and remember what the article was about. I use rewrite when I know I could have written something better, but I use different templates for rewrite because sometimes I want it to be more formal, more quirky, or then more serious, more dramatic. And I have a template for each. And these three that I just went over have been great learning tools in bettering my own writing. I don't use templates like write a paragraph or generate text very often because my vault is my ecosystem of knowledge and I want it to be written exclusively by me. The other two that I use a lot are brainstorm, especially when using children notes like I just went over, and lastly blog titles, which sometimes helps with coming up with ideas for a video title or a blog post. You can also use DALI 2 via this API by simply installing it in the package manager. I'm not big into AI generated art, but if you are, then that's a great way to use it. One thing I really want to do this year is to train a model solely on my vault so that interacting with it would be kind of like querying my brain, as dystopian as that might sound. I'll make sure to update you if that works out. I use Obsidian to set my goals like this one, and you can learn more about it from this video right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great one. Bye.